welcome back to another episode of the Globe interview series. Today with me is Carlos Noé Saavedra, Head of Growth and Innovation at Fi Treasury. So, hey Carlos, how are you? Thank you, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Good, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So, let's jump right into it. Let's talk a bit about your background and how you jumped into the crypto sphere. Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been just mostly an investor in cryptocurrency. Uh, bought Bitcoin back in 2014 and just been around the space uh, since then. Uh, been an angel investor in a couple of different companies and I've been an advisor um, in a few others. Uh, but I come from a more traditional kind of TradFi background, investment banking and kind of the buy side and venture capital. But then I did my master studies at London Business School. And that's when I really started jumping into blockchain the full time as a builder. Uh, launch, helped launch the LBS Blockchain Society, uh, wrote up the white paper for their DAO, and then also founded Arc Street at that time with some of my coworkers and some of my classmates. Amazing. So you've previously worked in TradFi, you know, in alternative asset management. So how has that kind of experience translated into the, you know, the head of growth and innovation at Arc Street? Yeah, um, there's a lot of parallels. Um, so I think one thing I realized, especially working at a large bulge bracket bank, was some of the inefficiencies uh, that they're going through and how their technology is really outdated. Um, so I think early on, I didn't realize uh, the opportunity as much because blockchain was still very new and still hadn't been developed. Most of the code was for developers, so not many applications. But as I started, because um, I kept working and trying to find more, I realized that there was a lot of fields that were just incredibly inefficient and banks just like threw people at them. And that's why you get this middle management layer of people just doing kind of busy work uh, because the technology just isn't there. So at Arc Street, a lot of what we're doing with some of my coworkers is identifying those weaknesses, um, trying to bring them to uh, blockchain because a lot of the traditional finance, it, it does have a lot of good merits. There's a lot of like the risk management, some of the um, investment analysis is very good and it will be useful for blockchain. Uh, but there's other innovations that blockchain can bring to make it even better. Amazing. So can you go a little bit more in depth about Arc Street? And uh, so we were talking earlier about, you know, you guys used to be Arc Street Capital. <laughs> uh, so let's let's hear the story. Yeah. So uh, even before we came to LBS, um, me and some of our coworkers, we met. Um, I've always been entrepreneurial and working on an investment or looking at different businesses. Um, so when we came to LBS, I hadn't even thought about starting a blockchain fund at all, um, but met a couple of awesome people. Um, one, of my, one of my partners, he led blockchain research at JP Morgan's CIO group, and he was the one that really had the idea of starting um, just a blockchain company. Um, his childhood friend is a NASA scientist, and he had actually, that together they had built quite a few models. So us um, and a couple other partners that also have uh, fintech blockchain experience, we initially wanted to be a hedge fund um, and had gotten really good progress actually. Uh, word of mouth got out through LBS. So we had maybe about 5 million in, in like soft commitments of people saying, yeah, once you structure the company, I'll invest. And quite a few of those were like executives of funds or family offices. Um, so it was definitely something that would have, would have done really well how we pursued it. Um, but about January of last year, um, I had really gotten into DAO research because I was building the LBS DAO. And as we were working on Arc Street, we noticed that a lot of our clients were actually people that are running protocols or people that made a lot of money in blockchain. And they had a lot of cryptocurrency that were actually going to sell their crypto, move it into fiat, into a bank, and then invest into our fund. And we realized like that doesn't really make sense. There's a demand here uh, for diversification and proper portfolio management. So that's when we started digging into what other opportunities there were. And we pivoted into building DeFi infrastructure for cryptocurrency treasury management. And that has really changed the progress and the growth of our, of our company. The, the TAM of what we're building is huge. It's a very important opportunity. So we're really excited about what we're delivering. Amazing. So, right, as of Q1 this year, so you have, you know, pending collaborations with, I think, eight DAOs uh, and then DAO tooling platforms. Can you talk a bit more about these partnerships? 
Yeah, so um, these are people on our wait list. The list has actually grown. We're at about 25. Nice. Uh, we're in talks with two groups that are in the top five of treasuries across the entire space. Uh, I think that number will only continue to grow uh, because right now we're really focused on fundraising and opening up our seed round. Um, so I think once we get those investors on the cap table, they'll make introductions for us. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the bear market has also helped us a lot in that it's there's a lot of different companies who need help now, who want advice. They realize that um, they can't operate their company any longer because their assets are down so much that they can't go through with their plan. And that's the problem that we're solving. So we've had quite a bit of people come to us saying, hey, uh, we, we need advice. You're actually building something that we desperately need at the moment. So I think over the summer and once we get closer to launch, that'll keep expanding. Um, so it's been, it's been great. As soon as we get in front of these clients, they all kind of get it and they all really identify maybe three to five different use cases that we're bringing that's unique to the system, to the space. So we're really excited about continuing that conversation, getting out there, sharing what we're doing and the importance of blockchain treasury management and how it should actually be run uh, for it to be effective. Amazing. So you are a DAO treasury management group. How do you actually manage your assets? Well, your clients' assets. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we're, we have a lot of algorithms that we're building out, but effectively what we're doing is bringing a pension fund endowment approach to the system. Mm -hmm. Right now, most other managers either use like some sort of index uh, or they'll do maybe delta neutral with options. Uh, but that causes a lot of, a lot of problems is, is not the best way to manage these type of assets. So our goal really is to provide good risk adjusted returns, but to really minimize the volatility. Because for a lot of these uh, treasuries, it doesn't matter if they're up 200% uh, one day, but then the next day they're down 80%. Because once they hit uh, a certain threshold on the downside, they physically can't operate. They can't pay their employees, they can't pay for audits. So they seize operations. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why you see this big cycle um, in volatility for cryptocurrencies. Because at a certain point, shops just close down. So what we're doing is we're looking to minimize that range of volatility. Um, and Tradify is called like the core portfolio. So we wanna be able to bring that safe, more steady assets while still providing upside exposure uh, to, to these markets, you know, to, to the clients. Amazing. Yeah, so you know, this past year has been a huge year for DAOs. Um, I mean, just in this period alone, there's been, you know, eight times more. So how do you at Art Street um, kind of define which DAOs are worth managing? Yeah, no, that's a great question because it's, um, I'm, I'm, I'm fascinated by DAOs, especially after I built the LBS blockchain DAO. Um, so I think there's still a lot of room for experimentation and people are trying things out. Uh, one of the things that we're doing is we're, we're creating, essentially we're mapping out networks, uh, like we're visually mapping out networks of the different tokens and we're measuring how centralized or decentralized the, these networks are uh, because that's kind of a risk, right? There's a lot of DAOs out there that are just decentralized in name only and it's still really just controlled by the core team or the couple of the investors. So for us, the more decentralized the project is, the better, uh, because you have more participation from the community, you have more inputs. So that's one of the things that we're doing. Um, secondly, we're only talking to people that are, the founders are vetted in public. So we're not taking any anonymous uh, tokens at all. Uh, so yeah, we're building a very strong filtering process in order to get good projects in. But it's, it's a little bit of a tricky thing because it's not, Good projects don't always necessarily mean that the token is going to do super well. Sometimes they're not really compatible. So I think for us, as long as people are building good stuff and it has a good community and they're not going to be um, actually trying to manipulate the system, uh, and they, they just have good intentions, then I think that's, that's what we're looking for at the moment. Uh, but I think for us in our platform, as long as we can get enough DAOs in our system, a lot of their risk goes away. Right, because we're going to have hundreds of different tokens within our within our protocol. So then, if one or two tokens, you know, fail or crash or do something crazy, then they're not impacted as much as you know the current systems people are using. Amazing, yeah. yeah. And you know, also where Arc Street comes in with the risk management. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah, yeah, the risk manager. Yeah. So one of the things we're doing is it's called beta targeting. So 
in different times of the market, we'll adjust effectively our stable coin in our protocol. So if the market's uh, doing really bullish and we're forecasting that momentum is going to increase, we'll do less stable coins and we'll go more into these tokens. Versus if the market's going to crash, then we'll do more stable coins, for example. Even the really good projects like Maker or Aave, their token is still down, you know, 70, 80 percent, even though they're doing really good things. Like Maker is actually lending out into the real world. They're a really good project. But we believe in the space. I think what they really need is the risk management and some of the downside protection that we can offer. So it's not for us, it's not necessarily about creating crazy risk and getting uh, super high levered returns. It's about winning and having the highest sharp ratio, for example. Uh, and that's where help having people in our team that are, we have scientists and PhDs on our team. We have people that are really good at macroeconomic research or have worked in private equity or investment banking uh, to really be able to have a community that can come together and really get really good input on the markets because it's hard enough as it is um, to just manage your money. So we really want to create a community where we have experts that give analysis and give feedback uh, so that we can all kind of make it together. Yeah, wag me. <laughs> <laughs> so you were just mentioning the community. So how can people join the Arc Street community? Yeah, so we're still um, private. We're just going to come out of stealth mode soon. Uh, so right now, just follow us on Twitter. Um, and we have a few posts on media that are more macroeconomic um, that kind of show the type of thought process that we're thinking about. Or, uh, like our last one was you know, tying how oil prices affect interest rates and how that affects cryptocurrency, for example. So I think it's a very unique type of take on the markets that's not very um, easy to find. Uh, but very soon we're gonna open up um, our community channels, our Discord, et cetera, and become a lot more public facing so that we do wanna harness the power of the community and be fully decentralized so that anyone that wants to work with us to provide strategies or to write research uh, or to help us with business development will be able to participate, be rewarded, and actually be an owner uh, in the Arc Street protocol. Amazing. So, right, you guys are a relatively new startup. Um, so can you tell us a bit about your biggest triumphs and challenges so far? Yeah, so um, yeah, so it's been a long haul. So we just, three out of the four of us were in school at London Business School up until recently. So doing school and talking to investors was very busy. Um, so I think in terms of the triumph, we were recently in New York uh, a week ago talking to investors, um, I think almost all of those have committed to some extent at this point. So we're really hoping to close our seed round pretty soon. Um, maybe by the time this comes out, it'll already be closed. Uh, so that's been a huge triumph. Um, and I think just developing the idea uh, was something, something we're really excited about. There's quite a few different innovations that we're bringing to the table that don't really exist in cryptocurrency. Uh, but we're also mixing in really interesting TradFi items that have been around forever that are tried and true. So I think being able to blend those together in a kind of very unique, holistic way is something we're really proud of. Um, and we're confident that it's gonna work. Um, and also we're building out a team that's like extremely experienced. We're really lucky to have some of the developers that we're working with now. For maybe a day, we realized how oh, we need Solidity developers and people are like, it's very hard, it's very expensive. Uh, but sure enough, almost the next day, people were like, we love your project, we want to work with you, uh, let's do it together. So I think that really shows that it, this is an exciting project, it's intellectually stimulating. So we're really proud about just the projects and the process uh, that we've done so far. Um, and we're just barely graduating school, so I think now that we'll have free time, hopefully by the end of summer we'll be at a completely different level. Amazing, how exciting. Yeah, it's very right? exciting. So right what are your next steps after closing your seed round yeah once we close our seed round we want to be a lot more forward facing because uh, we want to establish ourselves as thought leaders uh we're going to provide a lot more research um, a lot more analysis on like the type of strategies and models that we're working on so we are working on the development of the code because we really want to make it sustainable we want to be the furthest from a ponzi scheme mm -hmm. uh it, it's easy to do a Ponzi scheme, it's hard to do something sustainable. So we're working on that. So that'll take us maybe, you know, three to five, six months. Um, so once we close our round, everyone will quit their jobs, go on this full time. And then we're just going to focus on building this, 
go to different conferences, meet with different clients, um, just start onboarding people. Uh, we want to do a survey across all our clients and eventually across the entire crypto ecosystem to get a sense of the type of risk return profile that's appropriate for some of these treasuries, uh, which is what people do in the wealth management industry, but no one really does that in cryptocurrency. So we're looking, we're looking to do more of that. So yeah, it'll be a busy summer. Uh, we'll probably look, be looking to hire some community managers, some marketing events people as well. So um, hopefully Arc Street is a name everyone will hear about in the next couple of months. Honestly, well, good luck to you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> like, Appreciate it. Yeah, right. So thank you for talking to us about Arc Street. So to finish off, can you tell us a bit about your, you know, your personal thoughts on the, the macros at the moment? What's going on in the market? Yeah, it's, it's a lot going on. I just met with a lawyer friend of mine who is looking at a lot of the stress opportunities in the market, which um, is relatively new to cryptocurrency, right? There was previously no, um, when companies would go bankrupt, they would just kind of go bankrupt. But now there's actually, you hear like Goldman Sachs raising money to buy some of these assets on cheap. So I think this summer will be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I think they'll still be a fairly, uh, fairly bearish. Um, and it's not necessarily because crypto, but just more of the market, right? Inflation's going up a lot, the Fed's raising interest rates. Uh, so I think that'll continue like a downward spiral on pricing pressure in the markets. And crypto being a higher beta asset, that means it goes up more, more when the market's doing well, but when the market's doing bad, it'll go down more. So I think there's actually still room for it to go down quite a bit. Uh, although, you know, still down 80%, it could still be down another 80%, I guess. So <laughs> no one really knows, uh, but I'm still very excited. People are building a lot of awesome stuff. Um, the technology is still there. The groups that are really building centralized and permissionless, those protocols are still doing well and still up and running. It's when you have human intervention and more centralization or when people are applying the technology in the way that it's not meant for it to be, that's when people are, are getting in trouble and you know, losing money. Uh, so I think the, the, I'm still really bullish about the space. I think it's one of the best opportunities, if not the best opportunities in the world right now. It's, uh, it's a once in a lifetime type of space. I, I think eventually most assets will be tokenized, um, especially like bonds, which is a, uh, ripe for opportunity, ripe for disruption, because it's very inefficient. Um, so I think the summer, maybe not as exciting, but the future incredibly exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, right. So if there are any, you know, newbie traders watching, how would you, you know, tell them to, to, to weather this storm? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's an interesting, um, so, cause I usually, uh, I'm a momentum investor personally. Right. So when the market's going up, I'll just keep putting more and more. And when the market's going down, I'll very quickly go into stablecoin. So I moved a lot into stablecoin like in December, January. Mm -hmm. uh, so I have, I've kind of been out, I've been just kind of looking at a couple of different ones. I think for newbies, the best thing you can do is just educate themselves and keep learning. So, you know, take some, some capital, it's definitely important to actually use capital because it kind of means a lot, uh, but just try different things, right? And, you know, learn how to do staking, try to build a bot, buy NFTs, uh, go across different chains. What does that mean? Uh, and just kind of participate in the market so that when the momentum com comes up again and prices start rising again, then you'll have a good sense of where to allocate capital in. Uh, but do it in like a risk managed approach, right? So I would say just participate in the markets, learn as much as possible, uh, reach out to people like me, reach out to people that, like you that, that are trustworthy, that have experience, uh, and just keep participating in it, I think. Uh, it's still so early that I think as long as you can make it and keep being active, then, you know, in 10 years down the line, well, it's going to be a very different story. Amazing. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, you talked about in 10 years time. What, what are your predictions for what, you know, the market in 10 years time? Yeah, I mean, it could be huge. Um, just for what we're tackling, for example, Dow Treasuries are, I think they said about uh, 20 to 40 billion, depending on, you know, where the price momentum is at. That grew by 40x over last year, which is huge, right? Mm. People were forecasting within five years, that'll be a hundred billion, oh, probably even sooner. And within 10 years, it'll be like a trillion. It's only Dow Treasuries. I think blockchain overall, I think World Economic Forum said that 
the amount of tokenized assets was going to be between eight to 10 trillion. So just huge opportunities. And that, that study was before NFTs even existed. So wow. it's still new innovations coming up all the time. Uh, so it's an exponentially growing market, right? So it's almost hard to forecast where we're going to be a couple of years from now when things are, the human mind has trouble, you know, picturing exponential growth. Uh, so that's completely different than like TradFi where it's like, you're lucky if you get seven to 10% a year, mm -hmm. right? It's just mm. different space whatsoever. So I think in 10 years, uh, it's gonna be different. I think DAOs will be the future of work. You know, a lot of people hate their jobs and they're very inflexible. Um, and there's a lot of income disparity that you have between the managers and like an analyst, for example. Whereas DAOs give you the opportunity to work across a lot of different groups, really pursue your passions, learn a lot more. So I think, I think once we fix their treasuries, then that'll be a very viable way to work in the future. Uh, so incredibly, incredibly excited about DeFi and DAOs in particular. Yeah, amazing. Thank yeah, you. Of course. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching and thank you, Carlos, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like, comment and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye.